Hey, how are we doing? Um, so in this video, I'm going to be going through how I rebuilt my ACL stronger than, than before injury. And then I'm going to give you some actionable steps which you can use and walk away with and actually fix your ACL without needing anything else. Um, but yeah, so originally my ACL wasn't the issue. It got worse over time. So originally my issue was I had a snap kneecap. And as my as I had surgery, bad physio, and then COVID lockdown, stopped training, um, just got worse and worse. And I got to the point where every time I was extending my knee, um, my ACL was clicking in, or like snapping into place. And I don't know if any of you, probably quite a few of you um, have dealt with that. Um, I've had people message me saying they've dealt with the same thing. And if you've tried ACG at all, you, you'll notice that in like reverse walking and also step ups and stuff like that, it can get really bad and we want to kind of avoid that. Um, but yeah, this is what took me the longest to fix, um, personally, after I had got to a point where my, my screws could stay in my knee, I got to a point, um, where my patella tendonitis and my quad tendonitis had gone. Um, this was really the, the only thing that was, that was still bothering me. Um, and, and why I wouldn't want to get back into football straight away, because this was just snapping into place, like, like every step I took, and it was not a nice feeling. Um, but yeah, so to really understand how we can fix the ACL, we need to understand what it does. So it's a ligament that attaches from the back of the femur to the front of your tibia. I don't know why I just pointed out my knee. You can't see my lower body, um, but it's deep inside the knee. So we have different layers inside the knee. We have like muscles on the outside, tendons, um, cartilage, meniscus, ligaments, and the ligaments are real, real deep inside the knee. Um, and the ACL, as you can see on this picture here, goes from the fucking femur to the tibia and its main role is to stabilize support the knee um make sure that it's not collapsing but obviously a lot of people go into why what positions the acl snaps in and kind of stuff like that and they say should we train this and i pretty much just say you just get your acl really really strong um and you, you don't necessarily need to do certain positions. Obviously, you want to target the positions that are going to get the ACL stronger, but it doesn't really matter about the 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 mechanics when you're running and stuff like that. Just get the ACL stronger is, is my take on it um, and what helped me. So basically, we've, it, it's scientifically proven that it can adapt um, to loading just like any other structure of the body. Um, ATG Science, um, I'll probably link them down in the description because I took a lot of he taught me a lot about the acl and that kind of stuff and his videos are absolutely amazing um but he goes through this um and actually the scientific research behind everything um i just go off results really um so yeah given that he's progressively loaded over time to the amount they can handle this is that this is what the acg concept is built off as well it's like your pain free ability do what it can handle the the load that it can handle for now and then build that up over weeks over months over years and eventually you'll get to the point where you're like oh my god my acl is absolutely fine there's even guys in atg that don't even have any acls and they're doing flat ground split squats just dunking and stuff like that so people come to me and say do i need surgery my acl's done this and that and i say especially again go watch the atg science video on it because he goes into all the specifics on whether you should get surgery whether you shouldn't well not those but people have it's been shown in papers that it can actually regrow and it can sometimes even be better without surgery but it completely depends on person to person if you go for the surgery option go for the surgery option but still do these steps after the surgery to make sure that your acl is getting stronger and you can get back to playing football anything like that football is one of the massive ones which we see acl tears in um especially in women's sports um what's, what's her name is it Sam Kerr just had hers? And then obviously you see Neymar. If anyone's seen my Instagram, that horrific video of him trying to um, flex it into place. We're not going to be doing any of that. We're going <laughs> to go slowly. Um, but yeah, people often say to me, connective tissue can't grow. I've heard that it's only muscles can grow. And once it's done, I need surgery, all this kind of stuff. Whereas it's actually scientifically proven that it can adapt. It can get bigger. It can't necessarily flex, but it can be put under tension. And when that tension is there, it can get stronger over time and that's what i'm going to go into in these next steps um so, uh, i left the music on there <laughs> my bad but first we want to be doing backwards walking so step one and two is going to be low getting tension at shallow knee angles and this can help heal the acl 
So first off, the first step is walking with no weight whatsoever. So literally walking around your garden, make sure that nothing's about or turning on the treadmill and then walking backwards on there. Um, it's the gentlest way to get tension at shallow knee angles and you get loads of blood flow to the joints in, in both of these. Um, you get you get the concentric portion of the movement and not the eccentric. So you're getting loads of work to the area, loads of blood flow, but you're not breaking down the tissues. So when you're fresh off an ACL surgery or an ACL, ACL snap, this isn't too, this isn't dangerous really. It just helps it heal. It get, helps it get blood flow. Obviously, it's all about load. If it's really, really, really fresh, completely torn, um, maybe it, it still might be a bit too much. And I think Ben goes into, I'm not sure what knee injuries he talks about, but he, he goes into, you can even go into a swimming pool, take weight off, off yourself and go into backwards walking. So no matter where you're at, really, you can start to get blood flow, start to get um, some work done without breaking down um, the, t the tension, sorry, the, the tissues. And then step two after the, the backwards walking is feeling good, you're getting blood flow, all that kind of stuff is adding resistance. So this can either be done in a turned off treadmill like this or a backwards. I'm not going to play this video because like I say, I forgot to mute it. Um, but even if you go no weight on the side to start with and then slowly build up, this is actively getting the ACL stronger. So this is getting blood flow week on week. You can maybe... If you've got something like the ACG treadmill, you can turn up the resistance week on week. If you've got a sled, you can then add weight week on week. So um, yeah, just adding resistance, getting the ACL stronger without necessarily breaking down the tissues too much. I personally done this every day. Do it three, four times a week. Do it however much feels good. Maybe not seven days a week to start with, but sometimes it, it, it can do that like i've said i've done it pretty much every day for like three years now um so yeah those are the step one and two step three is step ups again we're loading the shallow knee angle which is which is shown to help the acl rebuild and get more tension and get stronger um and actually in something like the step up where it is a joint dominant movement the acl is actually the limiting factor so you might go into a step up and think oh my muscles can do this my muscles can do this but you've got pain in your knee. Um, your knee is getting loaded in this. Um, it's getting more knee over toe. The higher you go, the further your knee goes forward. Um, and the more your, your knee goes forward, the more tension is on the ACL. So we want to build this up slowly over time. Can even start flat ground, um, can start with assistance and then go to two inches, three inches, four inches, add in weight, this kind of stuff. But you want to be going slow, really thinking about what is happening inside my knee. Um, and this kind of stuff. And this is in the step up for me personally, this is when the most snapping occurred. I guess it's because as it says here, the ACL is the limiting factor. Go to a point maybe where it doesn't snap um, into place if, if that's something that you're dealing with and then just build up over time to a point where, okay, it, it was feeling like it was snap, uh, snapping into place at three inches. I went down to one inch and it was fine. I done that, loaded up, went to two inches. Oh yeah, it feels fine. Went to three inches and now we can do it without the ACL snapping into place. Um, and we can get that eccentric load. So here we actually are challenging the ACL. We're, we're breaking down the tissues and making it regrow um, after. So again, you need to be more careful with this than the backwards sled. I would not do this every day. Um, I've, <laughs> I've seen a lot of people be like, oh, I'm doing this five times a week. Um, it's a short range of exercise, cause, so it can be a little, little more, but it's eccentric and joint dominant. So again, I wouldn't do it loads and loads and loads, maybe two two times a week, three times a week, um, depending on volume and sets and everything like that. Um, but yeah, so the higher you go, the more loading on the ACL until the hips get involved. So people ask me, oh, so if you just get to a point where you can do um, a pistol squat, is that just like a really, really advanced step up? I'm like, nah, because your hips are getting involved, um, maybe even other other muscles, glutes more involved. We want to be able to keep our torso completely vertical pushing our knee out forward and keeping that stress on the ACL, um, keeping that stress on the joint um, rather than having all kinds of different things get involved. Um, so yeah, again, be careful, do this pain-free, let it take time. Connective tissue can regrow, like I said, it's just slower um, and not as big as muscles. So take your time with these exercises. It, it, it's a process, um, but yeah. Then after step ups, we go into knee flexion exercises and pre-ACL injury, I think this is something that can save a lot of people. 
um and even after getting to a point where we can get to these but it, it is very advanced and it's going to take even longer once you've already done your acl um so like i say before the tension is what helps to grow the acl um it can't necessarily flex but the muscles and knee flexors and stuff when you are in knee flexion the acl is under tension if you look at a graph um movement gems has got a really good video on this i think it's called like a real called why is there an epidemic in acls or acl tears or something like that and he goes into he shows like the video of when the knee bends the acl becomes under tension um so yeah to start with we want to be doing short range exercises in this to get loads of blood flow to the area not breaking down the tissue too much so lying hamstring curls even any other kind of hamstring curl machines seated ones um and then go in as far up as we can. Obviously, if, you, if you're fresh off it, don't push yourself too hard to a point where it's hurting. I've seen people, and this is what I'm gonna say with long range as well, I've seen people go too fast into Nordic thinking, okay, I've heard Nordics are gonna sell, solve my ACL problems, go into Nordics, and they've done too much, and it's just messed them up. It's, it's made them um, regress in the future. So to start with, I would focus on hamstring curls, and then even just the eccentrics of the Nordics. But if you're not, comfortable with Nordics to start with, don't worry about them. Just do the lion hamstring curls and then over time build the Nordics, build the eccentrics. It took me a year and a half to be able to get my first um, flat ground Nordic where I actually came back up rather than just lowering. And the lowering portion is where we get most of the gains in our hamstrings and that kind of stuff anyway. And the Nordic is really important because it shows that our knee flexors, our ACL, everything behind the knee can handle our body weight. Um, and a quick tip on anything body weight, uh, knee nordics pull ups dips if you have less body fat on you it's going to be easier um so what i would do because this is what happened with me as well i got injured and i was eating the same i put on some weight and then obviously all that extra weight up top is now going into your knee when you're taking steps when you're doing nordic curls all this kind of stuff so i would try and really sort out your diet um do backwards sled that's going to burn some calories backwards walking obviously get out and walk um and yeah just make sure that you are as lean as possible because that is going to help um the healing process don't when you're injured with your knee don't go massive on just get pushing up your bench press numbers and that kind of stuff because you think oh i still need to train look at more relative strength so get leaner while getting stronger with stuff like pull-ups dips and stuff like that you're still going to look good don't worry about it you're still going to look good but it just saves that extra weight that you gain from putting on loads of mass um for, it, it stops that weight going onto your knee um when you're doing this other kind of stuff and, and just helps so yeah that's knee flexion and then the last step is the full range of motion joint loading so we've got the split squats and we've got the, the vmo squats well or slant board squats whatever you want to call them so when we're in a full range of motion our joint is really getting loaded similar with joint dominant movements like a step up but this really, really challenges our joint ability. And that's what I like to focus on is ability rather than diagnosing certain problems. I know I'm talking about a lot, lots of ACL tears here, but I am not a medical expert. So don't exactly um, take what I say word for word. ACG Science is a licensed physiotherapist and he goes into all the research. So I definitely, definitely recommend checking out his videos because he goes very in depth into all the research all the kind of stuff like this i just say what's worked from my personal experience and what's worked for my clients and i present that to the world and say do you want to try it um so yeah hd split squats are a long range exercise and something that can really help with with this oh i've just gone gone to the next slide but stuff that can really help with getting into the deeper range of motions because a lot of people that come off acl uh, surgeries and stuff like this struggle with getting the full range of motion is floss bands uh, Zach Woodward on Instagram is, is also very big into ACL stuff. So I definitely drop him a follow. Um, he uses floss bands a lot. And you'll see that when, if you try getting into a certain range of motion in a split squat, something like that, um, with, without the floss band to start with, and you put the floss band on, you can get deeper. And then when you take it off after as well, you can um, get more range than you were able to get before. So yeah, th those are really good stuff. Obviously, you want to regress these to certain points. You don't want to put your ACL under too much stress that it can't handle. We need to be really, really wary of pain-free ability. So on the split squats, take off as much body weight as you want. 
even taking off all of it, just getting your knee into that position without any load, any, any weight on it, just using your upper body on like two chairs next to you, two boxes, two benches, something. And also you can elevate your front foot. Um, but yeah, and then on the squats, you can again use assistance, use floss bands, um, these kind of stuff. But being able to build um, and load the these um, full range of motion over time is going to be really really key to building strong and healthy acl so yeah that is all the five steps if you have any questions hit, hit me on ig that's where i respond the most um I, the link for that will be in the description and i'm going to be doing lo loads more youtube videos i think it's just better to be able to explain my thought presser process on certain things and help more people in a more deep way than just like the 60, 60 second reels that go over the subjects and then they get taken out of context and stuff like that um so yeah comment below with any videos you'd like to see any anything that you take away from the video anything like that but yeah i hope this helps if you've got any questions send me a dm and i'll link those videos as well i'll link down zach's instagram because he's amazing with acl stuff um and also atg sciences videos on acl stuff but yeah if you're going through this hope it gets better it will just just <laughs> let it take time and really really keep keep training hard keep doing all you can but yeah awesome <laughs>